Welcome to the Health Physics Society's YouTube channel. You've probably stumbled on this video because you're concerned with the radiation that is coming from your cell phone, laptop, or that new cell tower being built near your home. This video will help you understand what kind of radiation comes from those things and what their potential health effects are. We will also dispel some common myths about this type of radiation. In case you don't wanna watch this entire video, I'll give you the bottom line to the question, is it safe to live or work near cell towers and to use my cell phone? Health agencies agree that there is no scientific evidence to suggest that living or working near cell towers or using your cell phone will cause cancer or any other adverse health effect. Want to learn more? Let's dig a little deeper. What is non-ionizing radiation? Radiation is broken down into two types, non-ionizing and ionizing. Non-ionizing radiation exists all around us from many sources such as power lines, microwaves, radios, Wi-Fi routers, cell phones, and cell towers, including 5G. Radiation in this context means energy that propagates through space, such as light from a flashlight. The dividing line between ionizing and non-ionizing radiation occurs in the ultraviolet part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Radiation in the ultraviolet band and at lower energies to the left of ultraviolet is called non-ionizing radiation, while at the higher energies to the right of the ultraviolet band is called ionizing radiation. As we move to the left of the visible light band, we move to lower frequencies and lower energies. By frequency, we mean how rapidly these waves move. In these lower frequencies on the left side of the electromagnetic spectrum, we find infrared, microwave, radio wave, and cell phone radiation. Put simply, non-ionizing radiation differs from ionizing radiation in the way it acts on materials like air, water, and living tissue. Unlike X-rays and other forms of ionizing radiation, non-ionizing radiation does not have enough energy to remove electrons from atoms and molecules. That does not mean that non-ionizing radiation is harmless, but that harm occurs for different reasons than from ionizing radiation. Extreme levels of non-ionizing radiation can heat substances and cause thermal injury. For example, the microwave radiation inside your home microwave heats food and water rapidly is important to remember that we are all exposed to low levels of non-ionizing radiation every day. The strongest exposure that the average citizen receives from radio frequency or RF energy is typically from devices in their own home or when they use a cell phone. 5G cellular technology, which is just now being introduced on a large scale throughout the world, will not change that. Now that we know what non-ionizing radiation actually is, let's talk more about its possible health effects. The only established hazards of RF energy involve excessive heating. For example, workers in factories that use powerful RF heating equipment can be burned if they approach the equipment too closely or touch active RF elements directly. Average people like you and me are very, very unlikely to come into contact with these extremely high levels of non-ionizing radiation. For many years, there has been some level of public controversy about the possible harms from much lower levels of exposure to RF energy namely cell phone use. However, in the view of health agencies, no such harm has been scientifically established, but the scientific literature is mixed. Health agencies typically call for more research on the topic, chiefly with regard to the use of cell phones, which involves relatively high levels of exposure compared to those from environmental sources such as cell towers. If an average citizen is concerned, the simplest way to reduce exposure to RF energy is to reduce your cell phone use. It makes more sense for the average citizen to worry about the larger risks of daily life, for example, texting while driving. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. Thank you for watching. And if you have any more questions, please visit the Health Physics Society's website at hps.org.